first free response prep question in Unit 7, which is Aggregate Demand, Aggregate Supply, and Fiscal Policy, and we're going to take a 2015 AP Macro question number one. We're not going to do parts B and C because that's actually monetary policy from the next unit, but we'll, we'll get there. First part, assume that the United States economy is operating below full employment. This is really critical that we actually read the questions. I know that you've heard me harp on this before, but, but if you don't read that part and you just dive in and start drawing it in equilibrium, you'll get that point wrong. And there aren't that many points available, so we don't want to lose points on things that, that are easy, right? And I don't want to say easy, but something where it's kind of a silly mistake. So, um, so we first start with part A, nice big graph, um, price level A. We'll say GDP R. You could also say Y, um, and then it says it, that we're in a recession, so we're going to draw aggregate demand, short run aggregate supply, and in a recession we've got Y F over here, and L R A S here, and Y one, and P L one. And let's really quick. A good technique is to say, do, did I do everything up here? Well, I did L R A S. That's here. I did S R A S here. I did aggregate demand. That's here. I did Y1, I did PL1, and I did YF. So check off the things as you do them. That way you don't miss an easy point. Let's do part D. Policymakers pursue fiscal policy rather than monetary. Real. Okay. Assume the MPC is 0.8. MPC equals 0.8. And the gap is 300. So it's a recessionary gap. So our goal is to add 300. Right? The difference between here and here is 300. So now we have to transform MPC into a multiplier, and, and it says if the government changes its spending without changing taxes, how much should they have to spend? So that's what we're going to need is a multiplier. So MPS, first step, we've got to find that is going to be 0.2. Again, we're finding where they're equal 1. Then 1 over the MPS is the spending multiplier, and that would be 1 over 0.2, which is 5. And now we can solve the problem, change in G, times 5 equals positive 300. So what goes into 300 five times is 60. So change in G equals increase by 60. Okay, let's do part, so that's part one. Part two, so we can check that one off. Part two says if the government changes taxes without changing spending to eliminate the gap, will the minimum required change in taxes be greater than, smaller than, or equal to the change in spending? Explain. So the, the simplest answer is the change in taxes is going to have to be bigger than the change in government spending. And the because is just important here, because it does say explain. It's because the tax multiplier is smaller than the spending multiplier. And the idea here is that that first round of spending counts, but the first round of tax cuts wouldn't count. So you can actually calculate this and say the change in T is greater is 75, and that's bigger than the change in government spending, which would be 60. Um, and again, I'm using the tax multiplier to find that. The tax multiplier is negative 4. In order to close a gap of 300, you would need a $75 um, tax cut. OK, let's take a look at part E. So we'll do that one over here. E1 says, assume the government cuts income tax rates. OK, each of the following increase, decrease, stay the same. Aggregate demand explained. So if they cut income taxes, that will increase aggregate demand because consumption goes up because people will spend more. Simple, good. And what about LRAS explained? There's no change to that one because there's no change to the productive capacity of the economy. Um, a tax cut simply is not going to change the capacity of, of our factories, right? And so part of that is saying no change to productivity, how productive we are and no change to input costs is the other way to say it. So no change to inputs. Um, if there's not a change to aggregate supply, then it won't change that long run. So hopefully this helps you make sense of the first prep question. I'll see you next time.